Hi, I'm Claire. Um, I'm program director at Athena, which is a um, research fellowship for women in AI safety. Um, and I'm here to talk about BCI and neuroscience uh, for safer AI. So how can we use neuroscience potentially or brain data to push forward some AI alignment uh, research agendas? And this is very speculative. So I've kind of brought together a bunch of ideas that I think are interesting and potentially um, could either be, like if they got the brain data, could be interesting, could be built off of um, just some cool things that are potentially uh, going to be used in the future. So why is AI alignment uh, important? Um, in general, it's really important for AI goals and behaviors to align with human values, um, and this would ensure safe and beneficial outcomes. Um, and it is a little bit different than AI safety, I would say, but both are important. Um, in general, when I say AI alignment, I'm mostly referring to like a existential uh, kind of future type of issue that we could have, um, as opposed to something that's happening now or like more short term. Um, and when we train a competent model, we can reasonably be confident that it's going to perform well on the reward signal and the training distribution. But to ensure our system is safe, there's, our, there's some other things that we have to consider. Um, our reward signal is underspecified, or we have little understanding of like what's happening under the hood of the model, basically. In general, this is important because um, as our language models and AI systems are getting more and more powerful, um, it's important that we like understand how these work how can we make them safer? Um, and yeah, working for us, not against us. Um, something really important is preventing unintended consequences. Um, potentially AI can work in ways that we didn't see uh, that it would. So it's really important that we can understand it better. Um, and yeah, like I said, beneficial outcomes. Um, ensuring that AI developments result in positive impacts for humanity. I think there's a ton of really obvious great things that can come for it, but it has to be safe. So um, it's really important we keep that in mind. Um, there's a few different ways that AI could be misaligned, um, potentially by values. Um, AI has values differing from us. Um, side effects that, like I said, we didn't see coming. Um, achieving goals that are like different from our own. Uh, misinterpretation of user intent. Um, and yeah, behaves unpredictably under new or varied conditions. Just a few potential ways, you know, could be others as well. But so I want to start by going into a few um, different like patterns of research avenues that are possible. Um, and so fMRI has been something that I've seen uh, a few different approaches taking as a tool. Um, so two, pro two projects that I'd like to talk about, uh, the first one being discovering latent knowledge in the human brain, finding truth-like features using fMRI, and the other being activation vector steering with BCIs. And we'll go into the first one, uh, finding truth-like features using fMRI, aims to directly test the efficacy of concept-based AI interpretability tools on human data bridging the gap between theoretical AI alignment methods and practical neuroscientific application. And in general, when I say latent knowledge, I mean what the model actually knows in terms of information or beliefs. Um, and the motivation behind this project is to enhance our understanding of deception, its neural signatures, potentially reformulating how deception is defined. Um, some have argued that debates on the definition of deception do not address questions relevant to risk and that AIs may still engage in deceptive behaviors even if they do not, strictly speaking, have beliefs or goals. So the goal specifically with this project was using contrast consistent search, or CCS, to identify latent dimensions of neural activity measured via fMRI that predict the propositional truth value of natural language statements. Um, and to do this, they're training a linear probe on brain response data that satisfies the following logic. Given a question-answer pair, train the model such that the probability of yes equals one minus the probability of no, and the probability of yes does not equal the probability of no. Um, and in general, there's much more written on CCS, 
Um, so if this is a little confusing right now, feel free to read up on that. I'm definitely not an expert, but I think it's interesting. Um, and potentially this could reveal new insights into how truth is processed in the brain as well. Um, and yeah, in general, I would say CCS um, is just un unsupervised method that tries to extract truth representations from model internals by searching for directions in activation space that satisfy certain properties. Okay, if a model knows something to be true, then it would be more confident than the opposite answer. And in general, this could potentially provide better descriptions of belief, knowledge, embeddings, and brain activity. We could potentially, if we did this, validate the use of CCS um, for discovering actual belief and knowledge embeddings in systems. Um, and again, yeah, provide assurance for generalizability of CCS to different architectures. And I will say that the jury's still out on if CCS actually works. So um, I think that it's important to think about like both sides, would this make sense with all the time and money put into fMRI? I'm not sure, but I think it's interesting. And then the second one is activation vector steering with VCIs. Um, so the motivation behind this work is that previous work has shown language models can be steered uh, towards tech com text completions which resemble humans in differing mental states by simply adding vectors to the model's neural activations. Um, and then other recent work has shown that latent representations of different models can be bridged by simple linear mapping. Um, and there's a few ways that this could contribute to alignment. Uh, generative models could be steered to exhibit the specific brain states of specific people to better represent their attitudes and opinions. Uh, reward models could be trained to reproduce human-like brain states during evaluation, making them more uh, generalizable out of distribution, and in general contribute to scientific understanding of analogies between LLM behavior patterns and human behavior patterns, um, how this could be improved. Another um, interesting uh, general kind of area is correlation and causal models and language models and neural data. Um, Linear correlations observed. Studies show linear correlations between activations in large language models and neural data from modalities like fMRI, MEG, ECOG. Uh, stronger correlations are evident with larger language models and more extensive neural data. Um, and then there's a few examples if you're interested in looking more into that. Um, robust agents are theorized to learn and converge on a casual, casual world model with optimal agents recovering more of this model. Um, and then something interesting uh, that Bogdan is really interested in is concept algebra text control generative models. Um, and so that's like a good thing to read into if you're interested in this sort of thing. Um, and then in general, there's possible ways we could lever leverage neural data for AI safety and alignment. Um, potentially we could guide identification of alignment relative uh, lanes such as like yeah, honesty, helpfulness, uh, harmfulness. Um, and then there's some other kind of interesting reading, I think, uh, as well that's related to this. Something that I think uh, personally is pretty interesting is just comparing uh, LLMs and the brain. Um, so there's been a f decent amount of studies that do this, um, showing different similarities to con cognitive processes in the human brain. Um, and there's some, sometimes not, sometimes yes. Um, but I think those are interesting. Uh, transformers in working memory, it's been shown. Um, LLMs show similarities to cognitive processes in the human brain. Um, and yeah, similar to neural patterns in general. Um, I think it's not super, super clear how this would like be a solution to alignment specifically, but I think that potentially there are ways like that it could be. Um, and maybe it's not like super clear now, but I think the similarities are really interesting and could be useful. And one of the recent papers that I read, Testing Theory of Mind in Large Language Models in Humans. Um, so the objective of this was compare human and um, LLM's performance on theory of mind tasks, which included understanding false beliefs, interpreting indirect request, recognizing irony, and detecting faux pas. Um, and some key findings were for GPT-4, comparable to humans, excels in indirect request, false beliefs, um, misdirection, struggles with faux pas. 
Um, and then Llama 2 outperforms in faux pas detection, but due to bias towards attributing ignorance. Um, GPT models lower performance in some areas was not due to failure, failure in inference, but rather a conservative strategy in drawing conclusions. Um, they used a lot of human participants, which is really cool. Um, don't see that too often. Um, and in general, results suggest that while LLMs can mimic certain human-like inferential processes, suggesting a form of simulated theory of mind, possibly, um, evaluation methods are needed. This ensures that comparisons between human and machine performances are meaningful and not superficial. Um, so, yeah, I think this is interesting, but is it theory of mind? Another project at AE Studio, Self Other Overlap, um, so like what would be what would be self other overlap? Um, it's basically if the model is having similar representations when it reasons about itself and when it reasons about others um, So the goal of this is to investigate the effect of increasing this self other overlap while not significantly altering the model performance um, And kind of the intuition behind this was that AI has to model others as different from oneself in order to deceive or be dangerously misaligned and in general, how it's operationalized, uh, the distance between the activation matrices when the model reasons about itself and when it reasons about others, um, aim to make the distance as low as possible while not significantly hurting model performance. And they've previously done this with PPO agents um, in a multi-agent environment, and they define this as a number of overlapping neurons when the agent perceives itself doing an action and when the same agent perceives another agent doing the same action. Um, and two, two neurons were considered to be overlapping if the absolute value of the difference between their activation values in the two evaluated scenarios are smaller than epsilon. Some research outcomes from this uh, would like to define and measure the self-other overlap, develop metrics, operationalize this um, in LLMs, and potentially reinforcement learning uh, settings, and then study impact on behavior, um, by way of examining how increasing self-other overlap influences adversarial and cooperative behaviors, um, and potentially, yeah, deceptive um, behaviors. Here's another one which I think is spicy, but potentially uh, not something I would fully endorse at this point, not that we have uh, the technology, but I think it's still interesting to think about, which is reinforcement learning from neural feedback. Um, utilizing future brain computer interfaces to directly inference neural feedback with AI systems. Um, potentially, there are benefits to this, which is improved alignment, enhancing alignment, um, state of the art reward prediction models, develop novel reward models, tailored rewards, um, more efficient individually tailored high fidelity reward signals. Um, in general, there's you know, some practical considerations of why we can't do this now. And in general, like, Ethically, is this something we even want to do at all? Um, and yeah, so one of them is quality improvement and reward signals uh, must outweigh the practical costs of extracting brain signals. Um, real world settings, would this work? Um, I think it's a little spooky in general. Um, and this is kind of maybe just uh, a problem I have with values, human value uh, understanding in general, like who gets to train the model. Um, there isn't really a set of ethical uh, rules in place, I think, um, that would make me feel good about that. Um, humans are fickle in moral judgment, judgments also um, from different contexts um, and other things as well. Um, and in general, this could make it easier to be deceptive um, for the model. I think there are ways this could make it more easy to be deceptive. So this would really have to be, you know, benefits outweighing the risks, um, and I'm not sure if that's possible now, but it, you know, I could see it being possible. Um, quantitatively mapping human values and goals. Um, so in general, like um, using more data-centric approach to do this as opposed to natural language um, to understand values. Um, so we could use BCIs explicitly designed to map cognition-related devaluation. Could be highly valuable, obviously. Um, but could be uh, difficult and something that we need a ton more uh, interdisciplinary research on. Um, and yeah, we could explore how goals and drives are implemented in biological systems. Uh, I would say more directly, but if you're a neuroscience person, you have a problem with that, that, that makes sense. Um, 
And so, yeah, this could be cool to yeah, get more data on this as opposed to just um, relying on natural language. Of course, there's a lot of practical challenges and ethical considerations with using like brain data, BCIs, um, for AI safety. Um, you know, you could point to like lack of understanding of brain function in humans or just mammals in general. Um, and so this could make it quite difficult to make sure that we're measuring what we want to measure or, um, yeah. Um, and I guess like the biggest kind of issue in my mind is that this, uh, this data collection has to be done like quite fast um, because of just um, ramping up AI development timelines. So if we want to use this for AI safety, it's pretty important that we would do it really fast, otherwise um, might not be useful. Um, and another issue is comparing uh, AI to like humans and the brain and kind of giving it human-like features, um, which I don't think is helpful or really makes sense. Um, so I definitely don't want to do that with uh, like comparing it to the brain or anything like that. Um, a lot of this neural data can be very complex, uh, so this can be difficult to have interpreter results. Um, complexity of human values, um, yeah, some big uh, problems, but I think it's still interesting and could be quite helpful to have for alignment in general. Um, and yeah, and also I guess just using human neural data can have a lot of regulations on it, um, depending on the country, but pretty much every country has them. Uh, that make it pretty difficult to either get your hands on it or to do it, because um, a lot of it is in um, either medical or academic, um, so that can make it difficult. I think another issue, too, is that, yeah, we can enhance uh, competence through BCI, um, which would accidentally empower malicious actors um, with AI systems. So I think it's important to lay out, prioritize addressing these risks um, in a very concrete, uh, realistic way, and to have some, uh, maybe not like rules or just thinking about this, how can we actually do this in a very safe way, um, and not just say, okay, well, we need a fast data collection, so let's go, go, go. It's really important that we have to think about, um, of course, ethics with that, and I think um, there's a few people that I feel do this pretty well. I think that we could use more of that, probably. So with these ideas in mind, um, currently I'm fundraising and trying to start a Neuralignment Fellowship, um, which would support one to three of the either these or other studies where people would be interested in using neural data for their um, AI alignment agendas. Um, and in general, I would like to be kind of a support and bridge between like neuroscientists and AI alignment researchers. Um, and yeah, I would like to create more neuro data sets for these researchers to use. And in general, um, having a maybe, uh, I don't know how to say it, like a, a centralized kind of group that can uh, take neuroscience findings and help them be used more, if that makes sense. Like um, have more people aware of them, uh, understand them that are in AI safety. I think this would be extremely useful. Um, and yeah, here's some potential research areas that I'm excited about, but uh, would be really interested to hear what you're excited about and what you think could be helpful, what kind of neural data um, you think is the best, uh, what modalities, um, but we'll also talk about that later. So. Um, but yeah, I'm very curious to hear about that. And if you would like to learn more, feel free to email me or talk to me after. Um, and if you're interested in learning about Athena, um, go check that out as well. I'm happy to hear any thoughts about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have.